Good old shipping delays, am I right? <laughs> Can we talk about this, you guys? Can we have just like a calm discussion to go over, hey, what do you do? As a community, maybe we can brainstorm and give some food for thought on the best path forward when you have shipping delays. But also, I want to add in a little bit of information about what I've learned and why these shipping delays are happening and maybe give kind of a balanced perspective. And hopefully, this will be a video where we all walk away and we're like, okay, this is good. I feel better now. I have more information. I have a better plan and approach. Hopefully, that's the plan. But real quick introduction, my name is Dan C. Bearded. I just love talking about beards. Genuinely a passion of mine. It just so happens to be my career as well. If you guys also like talking about beards, please hit a thumbs up, the like button right now. And if you're like, that's pretty cool. I like talking about beards. This guy gets to do it for a living. I can support him for free by just subscribing. You guys are amazing. Consider that and shout out to those returning subscribers. So let's paint the picture first because we have all been here. I don't care if you're a business owner. I don't care if you're just a consumer or a viewer. We've all been here. You buy something online. You put in your shipping information, you put in your payment information, now you're excited. You get a confirmation email, oh, 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 it's like adult Christmas, and you watch that tracking like a hawk. Some of you are checking it every day. Some of you are checking it every hour. Why? Because I get your messages and I see your emails about your packages that are late. And let's say there's an expected delivery on Tuesday. You're watching, you're following, maybe there's not the best updates, but you're still excited, and then Monday comes around and you're like, there's no way possible this thing's going to get to me on Tuesday. And then Tuesday comes around delayed. No update on Wednesday. No update on Thursday. What's going on with this tracking? And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, my package is going on a cross-country tour. Like it's a band or something or like a sports star on their last year of retirement and we're doing a parade around the country. You're in Michigan. You ordered from Ohio. You get an update in Florida. What the heck? Why are we going 75 down to Florida? We need to go north. And then all of a sudden it gets back to Michigan. You're like, yes, but it doesn't get to your home. It's at the post office 10 minutes away from your house. And then all of a sudden the next update is in Nevada on the other side of the country. And you're frustrated. You're upset. I get it. I'm there with you. You wanted that product. You were, you were wanting it enough to go online and pay for it and put your credit card information. And now it's doing this dance around the United States. That's frustrating. But what is the best path forward? Should the company that sent it out, that got it to the post office, have their profits punished because of the mail carrier? Is there a route to take with the mail carrier? Should you have to eat that cost as a consumer? Is the risk on you with the shipping? Or is there somewhere in between? We're going to go over all that and I cannot wait genuinely to get your guys' thoughts and perspective on this. But I do want to give a little bit of information that I have learned. I am by no means an expert or knowledgeable on this. But I've talked to people that are and I'm just going to relay the information that I've received that makes sense to me on why these things are happening. The first couple are things that we've all heard and they may seem like excuses but it's just real. For example, severe weather. We get a lot of severe weather in the United States and it seems like more and more every year. We're not going down that route, right? Hey, yo. But it does. We had a tornado in my city, my actual city. I'm talking hundreds of yards away from my house. Destroyed buildings, destroyed homes, right? Severe. It's been, I, at the time of filming in the last week, there was a bunch in like Ohio or at least warnings and they didn't come. But we also see hurricanes. We also see all sorts of major weather situations. That's going to affect shipping. There's other things that you just can't predict like a barge taking out a uh, an entire bridge in a major port for shipping and it shuts down the port for an extended amount of time. That's going to affect shipping. These things actually matter and they're frustrating but they matter. Now the real information that really kind of hit me. Let's talk about let's say USPS, the US Postal Service, right? The post office. There are many parts of the post office that have a policy where packages cannot sit overnight in their building. What a lot of people have told me they've gone to, and this is from post office workers themselves and people that deal with mail, mail carriers on a high scale, is they just simply put these packages that they were not able to deliver in that day when they were supposed to on another truck and they send it somewhere else. As long as it's not in their building, it's not their problem, is what it seems to be the approach. So these things get going on a cross-country tour just because 
There's no fault. There's no punishment for it being on a truck rather than being late, rather than being in a, in a building. They just put it on a truck and continue to update from there and assume eventually it'll get its way back. That's tough to stomach, right? That's really hard to swallow. Another thing that happens is sometimes they're hitchhikers. Sometimes the package that is in the same bin as your package from a beard product company, that other package isn't taped so well. There's a little bit of stickiness, a little bit of tape, just doing a little bit of whisper in the wind, you might say, and your package gets caught on that tape. They scan the big box that came from somebody else and it goes whoop out to Nevada. Your package goes along for the ride. They don't realize it till it's in Nevada. That's why there's four days of no updates or scans on your tracking because it's just a hitchhiker. It's one of those little fish that grabs onto the shark and they have a symbiotic relationship because it cleans the shark, but it gets protection from the shark and it gets food from the shark. Well, there's no symbiotic relationship here. Your package getting on a little route, a little ride out to Nevada does not help you. But those things do happen. So we got that established. What do you do as a consumer? How long do you wait? Who do you approach? And do you have kind of a like ultimatum, a kind of like, this is what I expect? Here are my thoughts. I believe in patience. I believe in perspective and understanding. If I'm ordering from a company that I know and love and want to support, even if it's a new one to me, but that's enough for me to buy, I either need to vibe with their ingredients, with their messaging, with the owner, something is making me want to buy that. I got to understand and have a little bit of grace towards them. If it's supposed to be there on Tuesday, I personally, and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I personally am going to give that package a week. Another key thing is business days. <laughs> Another key thing is the pack or the shipping option that you select. Many companies have different options. Overnight, next day, two day delivery, priority, ground, all these options. It's important to look at the fine print and the details from the post office or the mail carrier on those options. Cause oftentimes the cheapest option is the slowest and the least guaranteed. There's an option. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I don't want to get in trouble for getting a little tiny thing off, but there's options out there. For example, that could say two to five days delivery for the cheapest option. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you go through those weeds. It says no guaranteed delivery. So you as a consumer choose the cheapest option that says no guarantee as the delivery. When the company that's selling these beard products offers a, a, better status, a better option with guarantees, who's the burden on? Is it the consumer that chose the no guarantee? Is it the company that offered it? That's tough, right? That's tough. It's probably personal, but it's tough. What I would do is wait a week, give it some time. If it's still not there, if there's still not clear signs of successfully getting that package to me that I paid for, I then am going to reach out to the beard product company. Why? I've had no luck going through the mail carriers. As a consumer, no luck. I barely can even talk to someone. If I do, it sounds like they hate their job. They're not going to help me. And I've never had a resolution with contact in the mail carriers. Now my sample size is small there. It's not a large one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the beard product company. I'm not going to be super excited about it, but I'm going to be very understanding. I'm going to be very mature and say, Hey guys, I know this is not you at all. Once that leaves your facility, it's out of your hands. But I did want to update you as a consumer that wants to try your products. I purchased this. It was supposed to be here on Tuesday. I've waited a week now. It's still not moving. There's no updates. Is there any idea of how we can resolve this? Do you guys have any experience here? And then see what the company does. From there's where it gets tricky, right? Some companies are going to say, Hey, let's wait. Some companies are going to say, contact the mail carrier. Some companies are going to say, Hey, I'm going to refund you. Other companies are going to say, Hey, I'm going to duplicate the order for free. Send it out to you. If you get the new one, send it back. If you get the, or if you get the old one, send it back. If you get the old one, give it to a friend. There's all sorts of routes there, but that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to contact the company with understanding. I'm not going to contact the company and say, this is ridiculous. I didn't get my package. It's a they didn't delay it. They had nothing to do with that process. So have a little bit of understanding there. That would be my strongest advice from this video. But now I want to open it up to you guys. You are ordering and it is not getting there by the day it's expected. What is your approach? How long do you wait? Who do you contact? How do you contact them? What do you expect? 
Let's have a mature discussion here. I know people can get heated about money and expectations and companies and all this. Let's be productive. Let's find a better solution, a better way forward, and really use this video to help understand the company side of things, but also maybe the company who deals with order after order after order can become numb, can also understand the perspective of the consumer that's just excited, that spent their hard-earned money, and they just want the product. It's a tough one, you guys, but I think we're the community that can handle this and make it better than where it started, right? Let's read those comments down below, you guys. My name is Dan C. Bearded. Please listen carefully here. Stay bearded and stay positive.